Zippers, I have a love-hate relationship for them. As many of you know, zippers come on most bikepacking frame bags. In a variety of other products we use while bikepacking, like sleeping bags, tents, rain jackets, jackets in general, one of the biggest annoyances is, well, when they quit working. It ruins the overall experience of a product. But there are some simple steps to either fix or prevent that from happening in general. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in this video. Let's do it. This video is supported in part by Surly Bikes, who just recently launched their newest bike, the Ghost Grappler. The Ghost Grappler is Surly's take on the drop bar mountain bike. Surly dubs it a dedicated drop bar trail bike, and after pedaling it for a handful of months, it certainly is a blast to ride on single track, pavement, and everything in between. I recently even threw some flat bars on it, and I absolutely love it. So to learn more about Surly's Ghost Grappler, you can click on this card right here, and it's also linked in the description below. So I'll be leaving this space as we're moving in the next few weeks, and because of that, I've been going through a bunch of bags and actually finding a few bags with some serious zipper issues, or maybe not serious, but very dirty zippers. So I figured now is a good time to chat about this. So I'm sure a handful of you have run across a zipper that no longer functions or functions properly. Well, I'm here to tell you and share with you that nine times out of 10, that zipper can be resurrected to actually function again or even feel like new. All right, so what kind of zippers are out there? All right, well, first off, you have coil zippers. And these are the most popular on outdoor gear as they're flexible, they can bend, they pack down really well, and they come in a variety of different sizes. But in my experience, these are the zippers that I have the most issues with. Whether it be a tooth that bends or dust that gets stuck between the teeth, it's not uncommon to run into issues with coil zippers. I also find that the smaller the teeth, the more susceptible these zippers are to getting stuck or failing. Here's a really good example of a coil zipper. This is a coil zipper that bends. Um, you can kind of see it's super flexible. Uh, this is installed on an older Osprey hydration pack. So the other kind of zipper is molded tooth zippers. And these have gained popularity in the outdoor world over I'd say the last 10 or so years. These zippers glide really, really well and have super strong teeth. And typically the teeth are relatively large, but you can find them in smaller sizes similar to coil zippers. The problem with molded tooth zippers is they don't pack down very well and they're not nearly as flexible as coil zippers. However, they are much more durable and need much less maintenance than a coil zipper. So this Rock Guys custom frame bag for my spearfish, this is a great example of molded tooth zippers. Uh, typically you'll find them to be rather straight. Um, they don't really bend all that well. This bag is oh, about three years old and I haven't treated it once and it still glides just as good or maybe almost as good as day one. All right, so talking a little bit about preventative maintenance here. So zippers, they're sensitive to grit and grime. So taking care of them is important. A few things to note here, don't force a zipper. When in doubt and you feel resistance, stop. This happens on sleeping bags, tents, and frame bags. If you force a zipper, you're likely going to be doing more damage and going to make it worse or even rip part of say, a mesh part of your tent or a sleeping bag. So another thing here is to make sure you pack your frame bag or your bags properly so not to put any stress on the zipper. This is especially important with frame bags and that's why I truly love the, the Revelate Designs Zip Stretch Zipper technology where they use a stretchy fabric on one of the sides of the zipper to help aid enclosure of a packed bag. And finally, cleaning your zipper is imperative, especially with a coil zipper. I'll get the zipper wet with just some water and use a brush to clean out the zipper. Or if there's something really caked on it, like some mud or something like that, I'll take a tiny bit of dish soap and use a toothbrush to clean it out. I typically neglect my bags more than the next person, but I think a good general rule is to either do this before or after every major trip, or I would say probably four times a year or so. All right, so people talk about lubing zippers. So what does this all mean? Oftentimes zippers need a little bit of extra help, especially if the zipper is maybe a little bit older. And that's where zipper lube comes in handy. So if you're on a trip and you can't clean the zipper, but you need some additional help, chapstick is a great option in a pinch. If you have some sort of candle or even ski wax at home, that does the trick as well. 
There are also specific zipper lubes on the market like this zipper ease and gear aid also makes a zipper cleaner one thing you should avoid using is anything that's going to attract any more grit and grime like chain lube or really any oil on the zipper finally zippers they do fail and i've had both molded tooth and coil zippers fail on me usually due to maybe uh, improper packing or some impatience on my part it does happen but when they do fail the best thing to do is reach out to a local bag maker to have them replace the zipper Oftentimes people think once the zipper fails, the bag is ruined. But this is just not the case and I'm sure they would be happy to help resurrect your bag. And if all else fails and you refuse to use zippers any longer, well, there are some options out there like this bag right here. This Rock Guys fully welded waterproof frame bag. So zippers, yeah, we just did a video on them. Go figure. So if you have any tips or tricks regarding zippers, leave them in the comment section below. And if you have yet to do so, please hit that subscribe button. And if you want to help support us a little bit more, if you like what you see on bikepacking.com, if you like what you see on this YouTube channel, consider joining the Bikepacking Collective. There's a link provided below with all of the details on the Bikepacking Collective. As always, thank you all so much for the support and watching. And until next time, pedal further. Thank you.